The waiver wire might be the most important thing in fantasy football. Did you lose a quarterback? Did you lose a tight end? Did you lose a running back? Mind the waiver wire. There are some great options this week. Make sure to check out this episode where we tell you who to pick up. Hey, everyone, before we start, the show wants to encourage you to check out jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. You can help support this show and get yourself a bunch of cool perks. We're talking an extra show every single week. We're talking flex rankings, full projections, access to the four-player start, sit tool, community access, tons and tons of cool things, game day alerts. The list goes on and on. Check it out at jointhefoot.com. Today's episode is brought to you by 20th Century Fox's new film, Ad Astra. Brad Pitt stars as Roy McBride, an astronaut who travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father and unravel a mystery that threatens the very survival of our planet, Mike. His journey will uncover secrets that challenge the nature of human existence and our place in the cosmos at Astra in theaters September 20th. The fate of humanity depends on one man. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's good to be here. It's great to be here. It's super fantastic. I'm Andy Holloway, here. joined as always by Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Hello. And the Marlboro man himself, Jason Moore. Uh, howdy, partner. We're back again. It's Tuesday, September 17th. Thank you for listening to the podcast as we head into week three of the NFL season. Oh, so much has happened. Injuries. <laughs> yeah. Injuries everywhere. We had the Monday night game. Last night, not many Jets remaining, not many Jets surviving right now, but we'll talk about that, recap it a little bit. I did, I thought this might be fun. Through two weeks, let's go through some of the leaders in football. Ready? Oh, Passing yards nice. leader. Come on. I think we know that one, right? Patrick Mahomes, 821 passing yards. That makes sense. Passing touchdown leader. Okay. There's three of them. Patrick Mahomes. Oh, phew. Things make sense. Seven touchdowns. Excellent. But two other players with seven touchdowns. Lamar Jackson. Yep. Dak Prescott. Mm. Through, through two weeks. Mm. Who leads the league in interceptions? Any guesses? It's uh, uh, Patrick Baker Mahomes. Or Mayfield. It's actually. Oh, I was saying like, a, I thought you were telling a joke about like who no. was catching them. Nope. Nope. Matt Ryan. Five interceptions so far through two weeks. He got a little loose on that Sunday night game. Had said some uh, yeah. doesn't care balls. Uh, rushing yardage leader, we know this. Dalvin Cook, 265 rushing yards. Saquon second. Reception leader, Michael Thomas, 20 mm. receptions. That was fun. He's also 26 <laughs> targets. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, which is number one in the league. But here are the next four target leaders. I thought this would be interesting. Keenan Allen. Makes sense. Sammy Watkins. Larry Fitzgerald. DJ Moore. If Damn. Cam Newton wasn't banged up, I would be telling people to buy DJ Moore because the targets, the receptions for him through a couple of weeks, very interesting with a shoulder recovering and maybe he'd be, you know, in a better yeah. position to to grow with Cam Cam's sure. health, but right now you can't do that. Uh receiving yardage leader, John Ross, two hundred and seventy yards. Receiving touchdowns, three players or four players with three of them. John Ross, Sammy Watkins, Julio Jones, T. Y. Hilton. And then I thought this was fascinating as well. The the week one target leader was Jameson Crowder with the 17. <laughs> Goodbye, Jameson. <laughs> oh, Farewell. That was fun, too. Who led the league in week two targets? Pass catcher. Ooh. Targets? That was a hint, by the way. Pass catcher? Yeah, oh, that was a little bit of a hint. Zachary Ertz. It's Zach Ertz. Yeah. He's, 16, he's back. 16 targets in week two. Wow. And with well, Alsh Alshon is likely to miss that's. the next two games. Like, you, you saw... Uh, the thing I've been saying about Zach Ertz, great tight end, but he does what like he does what he's asked to do. 
And when the team has a surplus of pass catchers, his target volume goes down. But now that they're dropping like flies in Philadelphia, Zach Ertz skyrockets back up to being what he was last year. Today's the waiver show, by the way. We're going to go through waiver wire pickups at every position. We'll talk a little bit about guys who are comfortable dropping because obviously you got to make an exchange. I was teaching my children all about the waiver wire and how it works. Mm. They thought they could just add, you got to drop somebody. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. What? For but, teaching us. Well, yeah, oh, no, no, you're, you're not my children. Mm. I would never let my kids smoke, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rough life over here. Uh, are you feeling Children any, don't smoke. Are you feeling better today? I'm feeling a little better and still terrible. Okay, all right, well, a few more months. A few more months, <laughs> I'll be on the of other life. side. Do yes. they still do the big metal lung thing? I remember how they used oh, to for, treat. Oh, uh, for when you had what was, what was that? Oh no, that polio? was polio. Polio, yeah. yeah. You don't have polio, I do you? I hope not. <laughs> I don't. That's really bad. Yeah, I don't think that they have polio. I think that they. I that, think I got my vaccine. That was discontinued. Yes, they discontinued that. <laughs> they did. They discontinued like nature. Polio. Yeah, they dis We did. We discontinued polio for the most part. We did. Yeah. One of our great accomplishments. Yes. And Joseph and Salk. I really? Believe, I believe that's the man who created we, the vaccine. We are so smart, Mike. We are so <laughs> smart. Oh, people come for the science and the, the medicinal facts on this show. <laughs> medicinal <laughs> facts. Yeah, you can find them on Twitter at the <laughs> FF Ballers. It's a strange handle. Uh, close, Mike. Jonas. Ah! Uh, Jonas Salk. I was so proud. Uh, what? I should have just I'm said Dr. Proud. Salk. Yeah. Yeah, that would have Better worked. Better call Salk. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Not bad. All right, quick question. It's just takeaways from Monday Night Football. The Browns win 23-3. to Trevor Simeon went down with the Ooh, most the broken of ankles that wasn't broken. Yeah. He went down. He had floppy foot. And then walked <laughs> off the as field. they call it, medicinally. Yeah, medicinally, they call that floppy foot. They do yes. not treat that with the iron lung. No. But my takeaway from Monday Night is actually on the Jets' side of the football, and that is that Lev Bell is a horse. I mean, he's a top five he is, yes. PPR running back right now, and that is with, you know, one game with Luke Falk, you know, at, at quarterback. So, you know, 31 touches yesterday, 10 receptions, 21 carries. He's going – he's he's spry enough to do something with that kind of volume on a weekly basis regardless of the quarterback situation. So – is he more of a pure volume play right now? Sure. Yes. But he's he's also a PPR volume play because you don't really have players to throw the ball to outside of, you know, Robbie Anderson, which has never been a really high volume guy. Jamison Crowder, only four receptions yesterday, I believe. And then Lev Bell. So and he's a friend to young quarterbacks near the line of scrimmage because they're gonna call run play, run play, and then ooh, we're passing. No, we're not. We're 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 running through the air with Lev Bell. Yeah, he People who have him in PPR are far happier than people who have Le'Veon Bell in standard. And the the ceiling is is capped for Le'Veon Bell, especially while they're waiting for uh, the, the smooch bandit, Sam Darnold, to return. I would say this, though. I am not looking to move Le'Veon Bell. No. I'm quite content with the volume yes. until Sam Darnold comes back, which has been rumored might be after the week four bye. So endure two more weeks with uh, – Luke Falk, who was 20 for 25, by the way, close to the line of scrimmage, and you'll be okay. Yeah, it, it, it's, it doesn't feel great. For, How do you – go ahead, sorry. It's just, it doesn't feel great for what you were hoping for with Le'Veon Bell. Week one, three and a half a carry. Week two, 3.2 a carry. I think really, I feel I, great about I it. I feel yeah. fantastic. Uh, I mean, th your worries all off season was – Ty Montgomery is going to steal workload from him, and he won't. No, Adam Gaze will be concern, a bee hole. The, the biggest concern was efficiency, and that has that has happened. But his, but the volume has been so tremendous that it has overcome the inefficiency. And yeah. The inefficiency is excusable because you have to drive the ball. You have to put the ball in his hand thirty times a game just to have any form of an offense. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've got Love Bell in the Listener League. I've been thrilled with with what we've. Uh, seen so far this year, he gets so much utilization that you know he's always going to have a fine game, and that's not on the back of touchdowns, which is great because I don't expect him to be pouring in uh, points uh, from. Sure, the I'm just in in a standard league, you you aren't getting that ten points from the from just the receptions. Like Lev Bell was scored twelve points compared to what the other running backs are doing with their touchdown ceilings. That's all I'm saying. I'm I'm 
content with Le'Veon Bell on my teams. You're just you you're hoping for a little more. What do you think about Nick Chubb through two games and this Browns the, offense? The which Browns, seems to be finding, still finding itself. The Browns offense is bizarre. I didn't I, like. I wasn't charting anything. This was just my observations while watching the game. It felt like every passing attempt was like this. 20-step drop for Baker Mayfield. I don't know if this was a design because of the offensive line problems, but like go go back and watch it and Baker is as soon as he snaps the ball, he is flying backwards. Like why why is every passing play revolving around that? Meanwhile, then you have the one big play was the the quick three-step drop I think Fire it to Beckham. Fair observation because generally, if you have an offensive line that can protect you, you put people into multi step drops. You don't. Three step drops are for bad O lines. So you should be seeing more of that and yes. more of the quick slant That's why game it's plan. Strange. You know, they're underutilizing Jarvis Landry, in my opinion, right now. And they're, you know, they look a little awkward. Now, it was, they do. A, it was fine. It was 19 for 35, 325 and one. Beckham did most of the work on the one, and he threw an interception, forcing the ball to Beckham. So Baker has not looked like a – The Browns offense like, has not looked great. I'm trying to figure out what to do with Baker in our league of record. Maybe you guys can counsel me. Because I, you took him right. – I took him very late. But I also have, like, Kyler Murray, who has, for better or worse, like they're struggling around the red zone, but he's 300-plus a game. and So I'm sitting here going, do I really want to roster both of these players hmm. – for a continued period of time when I think I want to play Kyler more often than I do Baker. So, uh, you know, what are you advising people to do in that situation in I a two-quarterback situation like that? In that situation, assuming it's a one-quarterback league, as ours is, you can shop either guy, um, and if you can't find a suitor for them, I would hold on to both because the ceilings on both are still very, very high. I do think, in general, most people who drafted any Brown is disappointed. Obviously, Odell Beckham had, had a, yeah. just a monster game. He's great. But the Browns in general, like Chubb got in the end zone, you're you fine. But he's been very inefficient. He was getting pulled off the field on third downs. Yeah, he has not looked like what a lot of people thought, just this superstar running back who's going to be a top five, top three type of guy. He's, you know, he's not utilizing the passing game the way that you would hope, especially considering you got rid of Duke Johnson. Then Dontrell Hilliard isn't right. active. This is like, okay, it's not going to happen. This but is the perfect situation for... You're not happy with four for 36 for Nick Chubb? I, I, the, the result is fine, but like the process of when you're watching the game, him coming out on third downs and not being in that role that you would hope he's in. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not saying like he's not used in the passing game. I'm just saying they take him out in situations that are passing downs, which I would hope. Yeah, for uh, to Ernest Johnson, got four targets. You're just hoping that those targets will go to Chubb, right? But it's not going to happen. All right, we can uh, we can move on into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. I apologize if you did. Did you mention Njoku his injury? No, we did not. Okay, just thought that would be worth. He it. was knocked out of the game with a concussion. It looked rough. He he, he went up, kind of got undercut and fell on his neck and head. He is in the concussion protocol. We will see if he plays next week. Daniel Jones will be the week three starter for the New York Football Giants. What say you? Well, well, it Daniel Jones was awesome in the preseason, but that's the preseason. We've seen many a quarterbacks. The backup quarterbacks look great when they come in and they're playing against third-string defenses. It was a move that the Giants I – mean, like you have to make the move. You're 0-2. The team is, is very stagnant. You spent a top – what was he? Pick six? In the, I mean, he was, he was a top-10 draft pick. It's a move that was going to come sooner or later. I thought it might be next week or even week five, but – here we are. Let's let's see if Daniel Jones can play. When are you making a move on Golden Tate on the waiver wire? Right now. Yeah, that's what really. I, I would yeah. be thinking about that too. I would, regardless of if Eli Manning was was the quarterback this week, we're just we're seeing the wide receivers with tons of volume, like no name guys. I apologize to them, but no name for fantasy getting high volume of of targets. I mean, you, have, you have Sterling Shepard with his health problems that he's dealing with. But Cody yes, Latimer's hurt. I would pick up Tate. Right, so you're just right. willing to. 
take yeah. a week. I'll take the one week, yes. Okay. I'm in the same exact boat. I think when one thing you saw from Daniel Jones in the preseason was a willingness to drive the ball downfield. Uh, whether they give him that freedom in the regular season, I don't know, but why not? I mean, get this guy the experience he needs. You're not yep. going to the playoffs. Yep. So I would I'd be taking a shot on Golden Tate. He's going to be his best friend. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to start again against Dallas. Congratulations, Dallas defense owners. Trust the process. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> so Ryan Fitzpatrick starting. Minka Fitzpatrick is off to Pittsburgh. And uh, Miami is worse on defense now than they were uh, last week. Which is an impressive feat. Yeah, please start all Dallas Cowboys, including maybe. Yeah. Somebody we'll talk about a little bit later because Michael Gallup is out two to four weeks with a meniscus injury. We're talking about Devin Smith, guys. He's mm. back, baby! I am so thrilled for Devin Smith. Mike and I were watching this Cowboys game. Smith gets his long bomb touchdown, and we're like racket. We're like looking at each other like, wait a minute, who's 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 Smith? And then we're like, wait a minute, that's Devin Smith, like of the Jets fame, of the – uh, he had Devin Smith, who has not really been in the league since 2016. Wait, yeah. Well, he was a second-round pick back in, what, thir 2013? A blazing 2015. I'm burner. sorry, second-round pick in 2015. Finally worked his way back. However, I'd be more interested in Randall Cobb this week than I would be Devin Smith. I think Randall Cobb with the – he had a, a, a six another six-target game last week, and we know that that role, the Beasley, Cobb, underneath – need the utilization with Michael Gallup out two to four weeks. So both guys interesting against the Miami defense. There. Yeah. We'll get shellacked. Alshon Jeffrey status is in doubt for week three. I heard this morning that he's likely to miss week three and week four because it's a quick turnaround. That'll give him the extended recovery time. If Alshon Jeffrey is out, you know, Nelson Aguilar. Yes. You have to look at him as a very viable option. Deshaun Jackson there's hope uh, from the New York Star Ledger, Zach uh, Rosenblatt, reporting that they don't think it's a serious injury, but I don't know what his status is for week three right now unless somebody else has heard something. No, that's all I've heard is, well, it is a groin injury. and it's Such a great opportunity ah! for him if he wasn't hurt. My groin. Yeah, and for a burner to have the groin hurt, it's, it's not a good situation. Uh, you don't want a burning. No, you do not want burning in your groin area. No, mm -mm. okay. James Connors, knee injury, not serious. He's confident he will suit up in week three against the 49ers. LaShawn McCoy's MRI showed no significant damage. He may be able to play this week, may not. We'll monitor. We'll keep you up to date. It's early in the week. Josh Jacobs dealing with a groin issue. Yeah. Tyrell Williams dealing with a hip pointer. Yeah, so Williams will play through it. It's going to take a couple weeks for him to recover. Hopefully it won't won't uh, hinder him too if much. If Josh Jacobs and Tyrell Williams are both unable to go. Oh, man. Goo 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 Darren Wallerus. If you lit, I just want somebody to talk about me someday the way that John Gruden talks about Darren Waller. Yeah. He's just, he, th this morning, the comparison is Travis Kelsey. That's the new oh, one. Oh, yes. So give him Kelsey targets then. Yeah. Well, hopefully he's, you know. As in down the field. Yes. Impossible. Legitimately. Impossible. Derek Carr is, inca uh, Derek Carr is incapable of doing that. I see what you're saying. And what his role in the offense is so important with that release valve so that Derek Carr doesn't throw 13 to 14 interceptions per game. Uh, Cam Newton's foot, not good. No. No, set, no, no, no. Set back with the foot. <laughs> they kept saying there's no foot injury is not a problem. How dare you? Well, why isn't he running the ball? It's not the foot. Okay, he's he might be out. It's the foot. Yeah. Now, <laughs> he's not practicing. It's the foot. Well, it, coaches are liars. I don't know what they're... Did you hear Greg Williams lying about Odell Beckham Jr. being okay, yes. a bad player? Greg yeah. Greg Williams is a buffoon. Like This is... This is proven. The man who was not allowed to coach because he's trying to hurt other players and then gets upset that someone insinuates you're trying to have uh, get other players hurt. Like this this is the bed you made. You're sleeping in it for the rest of your life. He's on the short list of people that I would not want to hang out with for 5 minutes. Yes. Did you did you see Odell Beckham's post game where he just he no. thanked Greg Williams for the extra motivation? Oh, did he really? Yeah, that's, that's spectacular. Great. Uh okay, so 
Mariota didn't practice. Injury's not serious. Should be playing. DJ Chark, Chris Conley, Marquis Lee, all listed as limited participants. Whatever. So the Jags were all hurt, apparently. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Chark in a little bit. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Go ahead and grab it. Get it. Get it or else. Or else you're going to miss something. That is true. Before we get into the waivers, want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. You know I've been talking about Manscaped. I love them. I talking love... the talk, walking the walk, Mike. Absolutely. They're not just a sponsor, but I am a frequent user of the Lawnmower 2.0. Nothing rides smoother. Woo! Below the belt because you got to keep it tight. You got to keep it right. You got to keep things clean and Manscaped. They are forever changing the grooming game with their pa perfect package 2.0 inside the perfect package you're going to find the lawnmower that i talked about the electric trimmer with waterproof and skin safe technology protects from those nicks which you don't want to get when, when you're no. using oh, when, no, you, no, when no, you're no, cleaning no, no, up no, no, you do no, not no. want those and they got uh they've got the plow which is a single blade razor that will prevent razor bumps uh, you have to experience manscaped to truly believe it and right now you can get 20 percent off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code footballers at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code footballers hey and foot clan listen up now our, is the time our the fantasy footballers leaderboard series with FanDuel is rocking over there mm. if you don't know about it there's 15 chances to win over 30,000 in prizes. If you win any one of the weeks, you play every single week with us, you win any of the weeks, you qualify for the Week 16 championship, the lucky winner. Oh, they're going to get an all-expenses-paid trip to Arizona, to the studio, hang out with us during a recording of the Fantasy Footballers. It's going to be awesome. And look, I mean, every Friday we're giving you some of our picks. We've got our DFS pass if you want to take a look at that. Make sure that you're putting your best lineup forward. Maybe go cheap on the Mason Rudolph. Oh, James Washington stack. Oh, look, each That's week takes. we'll tell you who our picks are. Give you some insider info so you can build the lineup to end all other lineups. Hurry up. Get those lineups set for your chance to win the fantasy footballers leaderboard series and hang out with us in Arizona. You just go to FanDuel.com slash ballers to enter limited entry. So go to FanDuel.com slash ballers. Put me in, coach. All right, let's start with the wide receivers, and we're talking waiver wire. So let's talk about how much fab we'd spend. Let's talk about whether you'd use that number one waiver priority at all on these guys. There are two players in the probably owned but worth checking on category. That's John Brown and John Ross. Now, John Brown, 72% owned. John Ross, 70% owned. John Brown should be 100% owned. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, w I was going to ask you guys your thoughts here. John Ross, I'm still waiting for the shoot to drop on John Ross. I don't expect him to lead the league in, in receiving yardage. I also you know, have been bringing up AJ Green will return. He has Buffalo in Buffalo this week. I'd be on the John Brown over John Ross uh, camp. What do you guys think? Yes. It's yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that because Ross could be an expiring fantasy asset. Uh, but we got to see what's going on with AJ Green because if if it's still Ross moving forward, Buffalo that's a really tough matchup. But then Pittsburgh and Arizona, those are two juicy matchups for Ross if AJ Green is still out. Right now, John Brown is ninth most in uh, he's in ninth place for air yards. Yep. Yeah, two, two weeks. It makes sense. That's great. But uh, seven for seventy-two on eight targets is a lot nicer than having one or two receptions and a touchdown. You get more sustained passing volume. Yeah, the the volume has been there. The depth of targets been there. John Brown is just a, a great asset right now. Should absolutely be owned. He is probably owned in your league. So let's talk about guys who might be available. Right. All right. Main waiver wire pickups at the wide receiver position. Who are your favorites right now? So if we're talking guys that are widely available, I don't know how you start with someone other than Demarcus Robinson, who is he's available everywhere. And he balled out six for 172 and two. And the, the, the thing about Robinson, he was the primary wide receiver too. He, he played on 95% of the snaps. It was him and Sammy Watkins. Yes, Hardman got his, but Robinson was, he was the two. And he will continue to be that until Tyreek Hill 
returns, and then we'll have to see what happens. So like if if you if for short term, I would pick up Robinson because you want to play him, even though the Baltimore matchup is not what you prefer. Hardman probably has longer term value since he w- I, I, he might be that three once Tyreek Hill returns. But Robinson, man, you got to pick him up. Well, you got to pick and, both up. Yeah, that's. I mean, that'd be the key, right? Uh, right now, Robinson far less owned, but both under fifty percent owned. You got to pick them both up. Do you? Uh, you know, what are you spending on a guy like Demarcus Robinson t- as a uh, temporary? Yeah, you, you know, because it's just as likely people need to look at Sammy Watkins last week, who I think we all agree is a more talented player than Demarcus Robinson, and more of a focus based on target share. If you look at the season, I mean, Sammy Watkins is near the in the top five in targets on the right. course of the year right now. And even he, you know, was the odd man out in this last week. No touchdowns, 49 yards receiving. So it's just as likely that Robinson could be that situation sure. next week. So what would you invest fab dollar-wise, and would you spend your top waiver priority on Robinson just for the upside? I would not burn the number one priority on uh, on Robinson, but I would spend, you know, I don't know, 8 to eight to 12 bucks on him. I'm a little less bullish. I think that the Baltimore matchup combined – I mean, there should be a lot of points going back and forth because Lamar Jackson can score. So it's not the end of the world. But I agree. I wouldn't I wouldn't. I don't burn factor my... matchups in anymore when I'm talking <laughs> about Pat Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Sure, that well, makes you also, sense. You also had Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk both put up 100-plus yeah. receiving yards last week, and they're not getting the but ball I guess, from Patrick Mahomes. So, like, compare him to Nelson Aguilar. Would you rather have Demarcus Robinson – who obviously can go full ham and just have this big monster game, but could also pretty much, you know, disappear. Sure. Um, or a Nelson Aguilar who, you know, if, if Alshon is out, which seems a sure thing, if DJ, D- DJX is out, which could happen, now all of a sudden you've got a good matchup against Detroit where he's pretty much the wide receiver one. Who would you rather have out of those? I think I would go with Demarcus Robinson. I would too. This week. So I, I understand that point of view, but you're having to make a decision right now on whether Djax is in or out, and that actually matters quite a bit to me as to yeah, what. Tyreek Hill is out. Like he, I, We know that that's going to happen. And the thing for Aguilar is, yeah, he had 11 targets. He had a huge game. The Eagles were also playing catch-up that entire game against the Falcons. So are you do you expect that type of a game script against the Detroit Lions? A lot of the times when I'm – Looking at guys like this and answering that question on the waiver wire, Jay, I, I would just decide that I'm content. If I'd probably be content getting either one at the right price than I would making the decision and paying up. So if I'm sitting there and I'm going, yeah, I'm going to spend, you know, I'm willing to spend five dollars on a wide receiver this week. I'd probably, you know, put five or six bucks on Demarcus Robinson, five or six on Nelson Aguilar. And maybe five or six on, or maybe four or five on Randall Cobb. That's probably how I would do it this week. If Terry McLaurin was yeah, not out there, that was, was the name I was going to pivot so. to. Jay, with with these new, the new sexy waiver wire names, yeah, yeah. Is where's McLaurin? McLaurin is the tip top of the list for okay. me, unless I have to start the player this week. He plays Chicago. It's not the greatest, but rest of season, I think Terry McLaurin. I mean, I, hopefully he's not available in your leagues because last week uh, we were saying, you know, I was I was yeah. uh, trying to say he's a great pickup. Um, so hopefully you already picked him up last week. But check in your leagues. Terry McLaurin needs to be rostered. He's 90-plus percent of snaps both games. He's the clear number one target. He's also looks great. He's, he's just he's number five in air yards. He's really good. He's uh, His route running looks good. He's a – Super fast sub four four player, so there's nothing not you, to like. Here. Did you see? Well, there, there was one thing, and that's the Redskins' offense. But right now, Case Keenum's sustaining it. Did you see ESPN trying to sell Monday night? No, Case Keenum versus Mitch Trubisky. Mm. Yeah, if you look at the lineup for Monday Night Football, is bad. where we stand right now. Look, things can change in a week in the football, but they can't be very excited with the decisions that they made. Yeah, it's just not a pretty picture. But no. but McLaurin looks great. I mean, it's rare for a rookie to put up the kind of production he's done through two weeks. Has Chicago, the Giants, New England over the next few weeks. So we'll see what happens there. All right, is there any other name that you want to bring up at the wide receiver position that takes priority? Now, we brought up Golden Tate earlier. To me, that's 
that's of a high priority. Sure. For because I'm looking to, you know, take my team. If you're if you're not looking for a fill in, you're trying to just equip your team, and this might be the week you get ahead. You don't have to spend fab dollars or a waiver priority. You sneak Golden Tate onto your lineup, and then you know you get him with Daniel Jones and see what you have. So he he would be on the list as well. I think Randall Cobb's a nice spot start. Do I don't you, know how real interested I am in in Devin Smith. I don't know if I'd spend more than a dollar or two in Fab, but I wouldn't mind putting him on my bench as a flyer. Yeah, I would also throw out Debo. Debo yeah. Samuel's been pretty involved for the Debo San versus Goodwin. I would rather have okay. Debo for for target volume. Goodwin uh, is is has the snap share. Uh, he's always on the field, but he's only had three targets in both games. There's part of me that feels like Debo is benefiting from the running back friendly offense sure in san francisco where i mean he he's got the six most uh yards after the catch through two weeks and he's getting these screen passes the creativity of kyle shanahan and then using that and and you know this week they take on pittsburgh it's very interesting because they obviously drafted debo samuel this regime with a purpose and they're they're putting it into practice they know how to use him well it's nice when co when coaches say recognize the strengths of an, of an athlete and yes, then put them in nice. a position to win. And then DJ Chart yes, had we, a very, very good week too. So he's put together two straight weeks. Nine targets, seven for 55 and a touchdown. He seems to be the the Secret Garden's go-to guy. and like That's what you have to pay attention to where Didi was going to be Nick Foles' go-to guy. He's The Garden wants nothing to do with Didi. They need to put up 25 points before he becomes Savage Garden. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. All right. I, I, I agree, and and that's my issue with DJ Chark. DJ Chark looks like, if you want to look at him, great. He's a talented wide receiver, and he is the, the He's clear, a burner, and he was a second-round pick yes, as well. and he's a clear first read for Gardner, but I just don't know if I want a piece of that offense very much. The, the last name that I want to make sure we throw out is James Washington. You might disagree. I think in deeper leagues he should be picked up. But to me – if if you want to grab him and stash and just hope, because James Washington was drafted to be a great player, right? He came out of college highly touted, where he played with Mason Rudolph. All you've seen over the last two preseasons, it, granted preseason, but with Mason Rudolph, he is torched. Dante Moncrief sucks. He pretty much got benched last week. So now there's a real volume opportunity and possible. Love fest from Mason Rudolph. I would roster James Washington. Wouldn't play him this week unless it's like a DFS lineup. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I would I would uh, I would want to have him before a potential breakout. Okay, uh, there's there's some other names out there uh, at wide receiver, but I think we covered the main ones. Uh, look yeah, the, at DK Metcalf. Say Metcalf with the, is the with other the name. Snap just, count. We need to at least mention it. That's the hard part with the James Washington take, the flyer. That's why deeper leagues, it applies more to me because I think that every name we mentioned, I'd rather take that shot than Mason Rudolph building James Washington myself. Mike, do you want him as a flyer in a regular I, redraft league? Uh, the other names we brought up before James Washington, I would prefer to have them, but I do I do side with Jason that you, you can't ignore that the two have already played together. They've We already have... We have seen that chemistry. What makes a great quarterback-wide receiver pairing is they just have a natural chemistry. Like Big Ben and Antonio Brown had it. Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson. They just they have they have a mind meld. You know the tendencies. You know the body language already of that player. I so love that. I just have I a hard time factored in with uh, Vance and Juju knowing that they're going to be the guys that probably receive more targets they overall. Could. But it's interesting that they've, you know, they they obviously when James Washington came out, a um, lot of optimism around what he can do, and maybe him and Mason can figure it out. All right, running back pickups. Who are your favorite running backs this week on the waiver wire? So my, interesting names uh, to me. Raheem Mostart is the the number one pickup. He is a guy that I'm very confident to put in my lineup. And that's what I'm looking for a running back. You know, not like, oh, I want to roster this guy. Maybe in three or four weeks he's going to be good. The The San Francisco running game just clicks. Shanahan's system works. And he's I got have, some pep, man. He's he got looks some slip, great. He's got some slippery pep. He can just sneak between these guys, and he's, you know, top speed. He looked great. 
Yeah, he really did. I mean, he he was electric on the field, and you know, you know, he's a must start. I think Raheem must start <laughs> at least for a week. Yep. Last week, uh, snap count: Raheem with thirty four, Brita twenty one, and then Jeff Wilson with fifteen. My name is Jeff. So uh, you might not be able to count on you know the touchdown distribution from one guy to the next, but the snaps kind of matter. Yeah, speaking of snaps, a player who is likely to see a lot of snaps yet again because he is infinite, he is all, he is Frank Gore. The The update for Devin Singletary's hamstring is he is considered day-to-day. Uh, head coach Sean McDermott said they still don't know definitively at this point. I've, if I have to take the guess right now in the waiver wire, I while that's running, I, I think that Singletary will miss at least a week as the way that he pulled up from that hamstring. And Frank Gore, it's inefficient, but he's going to see volume. He can, he'll can he get the goal line work, and they get to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Buffalo Buffalo's a solid team, and they're going to be able to compete uh, against the Bengals, especially offensively. So I'm, I'm very interested in Frank Gore if you need a spot start. Well, in, in hearkening back 10 years, he's been waiting a long time for me to say this. But Frank... Gore, great. Frank Gore's been waiting Frank, for yeah, he's you been waiting to say for me something. to say this. Frank Gore, greater sign, Adrian Peterson this week. Oh. Adrian, Adrian Peterson takes on the Bears on Monday Night Football. Huge, oh no, thank hugely you. Hugely inefficient no, in Week you. One. Saved his week with a touchdown. Frank Gore had 19 carries. Peterson only had 10 last week, and Gore is a, a much better start this week. Yes. Jalen Samuels. Now it, it's a tough call for budget for your Fab dollars yeah. for your waiver wire spot. If if we knew that. You know, James Conner was going to miss a week or two. I'd say, hey, you know, he would be the number one. Yeah, just you know, use your budget and pick him up. But now Conner should be out there. Jalen Samuel steps into an offense now, you know, run by Mason Rudolph. I just don't have enough confidence for me to. Now, if you're the Conner owner and you know that he's dealing with an issue, you need to go out and pick up Jalen Samuels. Yeah, yeah, you have to. They when Conner left the game, I I, I believe. Uh, 20 like 22 out of 23 snaps went to Jalen Samuels like the 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 one running back system will will continue for Mike for Mike Tomlin and it will be Jalen Samuels who is a great pass catcher so yes he you can't spend a lot on him right now not not even knowing if he'll play because if James Conner is healthy he'll still see the bulk of the carries maybe Samuels works in a bit more but Samuels should still be Try and get like a low bid on him, bid in on him so you can stash him. All right, what about Carlos Hyde? 20 for 90 last week. Takes on the Chargers this week. Also worth bringing up, Chris Thompson may hit the waiver wire in some leagues. Probably not, but 5 for 48 through the air. Didn't get any carries really in week two. The snap count, though, Chris Thompson's way. What do you think about those two guys? I would go Carlos Hyde. I, I actually think Carlos Hyde's looked good. He has. He's getting the work. 20 carries. And now this is a matchup where, you know, the Los Angeles Chargers are difficult to beat through the air right? and susceptible to beat on the ground. That's the the recipe for Carlos Hyde. So he's a very Frank Gore-style player to me. I'd rather have Gore than Hyde right now, but I'm fine with either. If you're dealing with injuries and you need a running back, you can you could start either. Uh, Darwin Thompson, are you yes. willing to pick him up and stash him? Yes, I'm I'm picking him up. You, it's similar to Samuels, you you don't have the information right now. Shady McCoy might play. I haven't seen an update yet on Damian Williams if he is good to go. The last thing I had heard out of Kansas City was they don't think that it's any kind of serious injury, so that that you're in a complete holding pattern there. But so, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, so if if <laughs> I love Michael Keaton, if if Shady's out. Then Darwin will get on. He'll get some snaps. Would you drop Malcolm Brown or Justin Jackson for any of these names that we mentioned? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that it depends on what you're looking for, right? If you need a start, a lot of the names we mentioned are better starts. I would start Mostert, Gore yeah. over those guys. So if you need a start and you have to make that transition, do it. Um, if you, uh, you know, otherwise, what if you I, need I don't, a start, <clears throat> a start. Um, I don't think that either of those guys should be dropped on their own. Certainly not. I wouldn't just drop Malcolm Brown or Justin Jackson. They, they should be rostered sure. in general. Now, uh, if, if you're listening at home and you have like some food around you, 
Stop chewing. Put it down. If you have a Dramamine, maybe you want to take that. I don't know the name you're going to say, but I'm already disgusted. Is pa- I just figured you were already on it. Whatever whatever <laughs> drug he says. No, it's it's Peyton Barber. Hmm. Do you pick him up? Because like, I dropped him last week based off of what was happening with the snaps in week one. I looked the fool because Peyton Barber went out, got 23 carries, got the touchdown. The matchup is nice The matchup week. is good against the Giants. Like he's in our two flex league of record, he's in my lineup over Adrian Peterson. So week. then you would pick him up. Yes. I think he's just in that category of spot start. Like I don't know how I'm supposed to count on one running back in Tampa Bay through the year, but unfortunately they need to be rostered by fantasy owners. Yeah, I think you can pick up Peyton and I think you can play him this week. It is is definitely a tough pill to swallow, but it's it's what appears to be the truth. All right, tight end waiver wire pickups. The main ones this week, there are several names we should bring up. Greg Olson being one of them, six for 110 on nine targets. Now, he might not have Cam this week, Yeah, but he ran 39 routes. That's the second most among tight ends in week two. And he had the, the weird bloody nose problem too so where he had to go off the field for a couple snaps. And he plays the Arizona Cardinals and most importantly. And he plays the Cardinals. But... <laughs> Greg Olson is probably rostered. 61% of the leagues he is rostered in. Yeah. It, it does mean, look, almost half a leagues he's available in. But there's a lot of people who need a tight end right now. Several went, you know, it, people freaking out about O.J. Howard. You don't know if Njoku is going to be back. So people... Let's, ha- you, let's, let's do the waiver wire segment on this show today with what I'm going to call the O.J. Howard standard. Okay. okay. All okay. right. Which is basically, if you're rostering OJ Howard, you freaked out, you're mad, you're angry, you're throwing a fit. But are you going to sign and play one of these players over OJ Howard? No. So would you sign and play Greg Olson over yes. OJ Howard? Oh, yeah. I apologize. If he was available. I apologize. Yeah. If, if Olson was there, I'd pick him up. I'm not dropping Howard. I'm still going to give it another week. You, like you saw last year, OJ Howard did have these games of just completely vanishing, like nothing or a single target. And didn't play a full season and was still one of the top tight ends at the end of the year because O.J. Howard is big plays. Yeah, and he got some motivational coach speak this week, hopefully. Hopefully. Will Disley, would you? I, I would roster him, and I would start O.J. Howard. You would roster two tight ends in that situation. I think if you've got O.J. Howard and, and there is another tight end out there that is worthy of rostering, and I think Will Disley is in see consideration. It? I think you have to prepare yourself. Same with Njoku. You don't know if he's going to be back or not. Don't drop Njoku, but you got to have some preparation. I, I view Will Disley as a preparatory stash. You wouldn't drop Njoku? I, I would I, not I, drop Njoku. I feel Njoku. like I no, would be fine I'm, dropping Njoku. I'm open to it. Yeah. If either of you drop Njoku, I would scoop him up on the waiver wires without possible hesitation. Okay. Sure, you, that'd be great. You, you, I mean, the, the, I would like to trade him to you, but he, I don't have him. It, I have him in our league of records, so <laughs> that that's fine. I mean, I, I think that he's going to be a solid tight end on the season. Caught a touchdown week one and was knocked out of the game week two. It's too early to move on from Njoku, but you have to prepare to have another player in case he's not out of the concussion protocol. You are far more bullish on David Njoku than, than I am. Uh, Eric Ebron, 63% owned. Maybe pay attention. He had three for 25 and a touchdown. He's touchdown dependent. Yes. Um, Disley had the two touchdowns. I don't mind Jason's plan specifically with Howard. If you want to watch Disley, see if he's involved again. He's coming off a major injury. So the involvement, five for 52 touchdowns, worth monitoring. Chris Herndon is not back yet. Now he comes back week six. Because they have, he had the four-game suspension and they have the, the bye week between now and then. So if you have a... If you have, if you have I a just can't see bench, rostering him yet. It's I too, think it's, it's just, too early. Just pay attention to it. Just if you have the deeper bench, then I'm okay with it. But for the for most leagues, I'm with you guys. I wouldn't stash him just yet. The, th- well, the thing is about Hernan is I think he could come back and be a really important fantasy player. But I also think the reality is he could come back and just be a streaming tight end. He's not a locked and loaded guaranteed star at the position. So to roster and clog the bench. For several weeks, for I don't, the I don't think you can do it. Of it. I don't yeah, think you I w- can do it because would you rather put Will? If you're going to roster another tight end and wait, why not wait and see what you have in Disley? Right, because you'll get it over. And a then, couple weeks from now, Herndon is going to be a must pickup. All right, here's some drop candidates I want to bring up before we get into our streaming quarterbacks. Um, 
Didi? Yeah. yeah. I'm, he he gone. Sucks. Duke Johnson. I'm going to hold on to him for I, now. I would be willing to drop him if necessary. I would take whatever approach I'd be taking with Chris Thompson with Duke Johnson in terms of whether you want him on your roster, you need right. him, better options out there. Jordan Howard, would you drop him? Yeah. Yep. Latavius. Yep. Yo, yeah. Murray. Robbie Anderson. No, I don't I don't think yeah. I would drop him yet. I'd we, be He's like one of those I, I I'm willing to if I need I've got an injury, right. I've got to make a roster move. I have to drop Robbie, sure. But if I could hold him, I'd rather. Yeah, yeah. we had signs of life there where uh, quarterback three on the depth chart, Falk, went to him back to back times and it, it picked up a quick fifty yards. So maybe, maybe with the Jets moving, they they know that Falk is the quarterback. We can get a game plan where they're going to throw the ball to Robbie Anderson. Uh, Tariq Cohen. Ooh, oh man, gross. I think I hold him. Yeah, sadly. Uh, Jared Cook. I'm willing to drop him, but he's one of the gross tight ends. Yep. I think it just depends. I mean, would you drop Jared Cook to pick up Will Disley? I don't think I'd do that. I think I'd wait and see what Bridgewater does in week two with some game planning. Myself, I sure. think I would do that. You would do that. All right, Marvin Jones. Um, he's he's a, just like a, a nice guy to have in your bench, but if you need the spot, I'm willing to drop him. Uh, and then Kalen Balaj, Kenyon Drake. You got to – I'm you, holding Drake. Certainly. I, I think you're holding Drake because of the trade rumors you're saying. But I would say that that's I'm an argument. No, I'm holding him regardless. Like, I want to it's – been, it's been rough for – the Dolphins through these first two weeks. I totally get that. But can four, you... four carries, then six carries. My, so yeah, he has I'm... 10 on the season for 31 yards and uh, has seven receptions on the season. Yeah, I would... it's, it's just receptions. Yeah. We'll and see I, if the work goes up. I, I, what I'm saying is because there's trade rumors, and obviously when there's trade rumors with the Dolphins right now, where there's smoke, <laughs> there's fire. There, It's a fire sale. I would hold Drake in the hopes that he goes somewhere else. It almost makes you want to hold Balazs, too, because obviously if Drake goes somewhere else, now he's the only show in town. But it's a it's been a real gross show. It yeah, is. It's been a real it's been a, the kind of ticket that you want people to pay you to take. Right. Like, right. Sometimes you go to the movies, and you're like, man, I've I've invested thirty minutes in this movie. I know it's not going to get any better, but I'm just going to sit here and watch it anyway. That's what like that's what Balazs will be on your bench. Mm. It's that makes been me happy. So so ugly yes. in Miami overall. It, you can't trust play, the process. Look, look at you, are you ever going to play a Miami Dolphin the rest of the season in fantasy? Probably not. Um, Can you see any scenario yes. where you would play a Miami Dolphin? Yes, I could see a scenario where Preston Williams becomes a flex option. I, I don't. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> I'm just, I, you're looking at me like I'm. Bang, I'm just saying. <laughs> You know that that is the only was outcome that I could like see. an olive branch to Dolphin fans of hope for the so that they can participate in the fantasy season. It was really just a way to mention Preston Williams as someone to keep an eye on for later. Okay, well, look, it's sad, but we've no. He's your guy. All right, moving on. <laughs> Full stream ahead. All right, favorite quarterback streamers. Heading into week three, and you might need them. If you're a Drew Brees mm. owner, Big Ben owner, you're going to be without a quarterback. Cam Newton owner, you might be without a quarterback. So looking into week three, pickups off the waiver wire. Mike, you've got my it's, favorite. It's yes. the same one it was last week. Why is it him every week? Why does anybody no one, roster him? They will now. Like after Now we've seen two weeks of it. People... You just you needed more time to buy into the fantasy value of Josh Allen. I understand the hesitancy at the beginning of the season of of being skeptical about what he did at the end of last year but he is he's improved as a passer he's got John Brown now he has like a legit wide receiver weapon on his team and he runs the football he he, he gets rushing touchdowns and he takes on the Bengals like Josh Allen should be picked up this will be the last time he's in the streamer category cuz he's going to be picked up and he'll just be a full-time quarterback starter yeah, the, after this. the answer to this question is josh allen we're we're all three unanimously yeah. like it's it, fu it's funny because he plays new england after this week like he's a great streamer this week yes. and then you'll be like does he end up back are we talking about him in week five again? i'm not uh, yeah i'm not gonna play him against new england so but this week a lot of people needing quarterback help josh allen is the answer um my guy to stream it's not a huge upside play it's more of a safer play 
I think Jacoby Brissett hmm. can be a solid option. Now, this is a guy who, through the first two weeks, he only threw for 190 yards and 146 yards. Yikes. But those were both on the road against two really good passing defenses, the Chargers and the Titans. Oh, he also threw five touchdowns in those two games. He's got a great coach. T.Y. Hilton's been looking good. Now he goes to his home opener against Atlanta. I think that that is a game script that he will be fine. If you're really struggling, I mean, I, I you know, it's like, oh, nobody's available on the waivers. Are you going to go grab Mason Rudolph and hope for a great week one? Maybe he outscores him, but I would go the safer route. I would go Brissett in that situation. I agree with all that. Uh, Stafford and Jameis. I'll bring their names up. Jameis faces the New York Giants, and Matthew Stafford takes on Philadelphia. Uh, I like the fact that, you know, I, I don't know if if I'm picking between those two, I probably take Jameis against the Giants, do but he's, consider, he's more owned. Do you consider Garoppolo against versus, Pittsburgh? versus Pittsburgh? Absolutely. Like yeah, I, I think I, those three guys are, you know, Stafford and Jimmy G are under 50% owned, so they're probably – Available in your league, and I would be looking at either of those guys. Yeah. Jameis, <laughs> nobody wants to play him. <laughs> no. And he has been so downright bad. But I think he has a very good game. I really do. So, uh, you, you know, take that for what it's worth. You're playing with fire, but it's a definitely a good matchup. And I think you three weeks in. Yeah, he had 103 passer rating. He was not bad last week. For in the, Unless you're just saying, like, he's been horrific for – he wasn't for great fantasy. for fantasy. No, right. for fantasy, he's only thrown two touchdowns on the year. But no interceptions, 103 passer rating, a 64% completion percentage, and... And a victory. And a victory, just barely. So, But he's taking on the Giants with Daniel Jones making his debut. So he's those are some guys that you can look at that are kind of interesting. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. All right, our favorite team defense special teams streamers. I told these guys before the show, I just I was just glancing at the Patriots' schedule, and I know that we know they have a cakewalk, but when you go game by game, then your eyes start it to get... It gets even better. They, your, your eyes get to... They get big, and they put up this monstrous defensive performance, and they go against... The New York Jets this week and Luke Falk. I mean, why even play the game? I'm I'm not even kidding. You're risking people's livelihoods playing football. Just skip it. I mean, there is zero. We all know the outcome. I mean, it's over. And that's I don't think I'm making another water bet with you, Jason, about a 20 point spread in this one because I'm not. What's the spread going to be? Now, if Jason gives me 40. Oh, man. If Jason gives me 40, I'm good. He is still would have won last week. I would have. Um, but he, but basically, I made a trade offer to pick up the Patriots' defense. I've never made a trade offer for a defense in my life. But with, looking at their schedule, I'm saying, like, there are tangible points added for my team with the Patriots' defense over the next six weeks. Yeah. And I was – I offered Josh Gordon for a defense. And, and, I and was, another defense. And I included the Buffalo D, and I was rejected. It makes so sense. So that's the state of the New England defense right now. Certainly. And also, well, so obviously New England is not a streamable defense, but you could trade for them. I, I doubt that owner is going to let them go, but uh, you could. And um, not a streamable defense, but if you've got the Cowboys, congratulations. Yes. They play the Dolphins. So I've, I'm looking at the lines. Do you guys want to try and guess what the spread is? Oh, for 20 the, and a half. For the New England no. Versus the New Jets or I'm, New York Jets. I'm going to say 18 and a half. You're both too low. What? 20, 23 20 and, and a half is too low? 22 and a half. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Do you want to double up on this? Do you want to give me 30, Jay? No. I, I Look, that's that's a All terrifying right. Do you line. guys want to guess what the spread is for the Dallas-Miami game? Oh, yes, I do. I bet it's 20 points. You're, you're too low. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 20, 24 and a half. Oh, my gosh. Why play the game? <laughs> That's Look, insane. Last week, last week I, I figured pride may overrule. I thought I was on the right trajectory in that Miami game. The wheels fell off fast at the back half of it. But these are some bad teams right now. And guess what? The Patriots have them both in their division. I think I would take the 
points for the Jets. Like, the Jets' defense I, is solid. Yeah, except so, for Jamal Adams is now – Complaining and, and unfollowing well, the well, team. Well, he didn't say anything. He just unfollowed them on Twitter. And removed them from this his bio. This is such a weird day and age. All right. Favorite team defense that. streamers. We're talking about the great ones that you already have. But this segment's all about defense versus offense and which defenses you should pick up this week to play. Uh, you know, I love San Francisco and the evolution that their defense has made through sure. two weeks. They're only 18% owned. They take on a rookie in Mason Rudolph. Uh, James Conner, well, not a rookie, but a, uh, yeah, a making his first start. Sorry, his first start for this team, and so you're taking off a youngster in Mason Rudolph, and you've got a limited James Conner. You've had problems outside of, I mean, even Juju hasn't done what people expect. So it just feels like a very interesting safe play. San Francisco uh, is at home in this game, so I love San Francisco as a streaming option. Now we we had these picked out before or we had him picked out yesterday does anything change for you guys with Daniel Jones now being the starter for the New York Giants like do you look at Tampa Bay because they were already an option for me I was yeah Tampa Bay's defenses look much way improved better. much improved they're way better and they're and, at home and now you're playing against a rookie on his first start does that do they move up for you they Jay? don't they don't move up for me they okay. are they do I, for I think, me I think they're a fine start I just don't think Daniel Jones is that much different than Eli Manning to where I make a, a change. Tampa Bay's defense looks legit. They've passed the eyeball test the first two weeks. They've got a great defensive coordinator. I, I think they could make a play. But I if the the defense I'm going with is a defense that I think has proven themselves to be a solid, rock solid defense, and that's the Tennessee Titans. Nothing more solid than, than rock solid. Like a rock, Thank rock you. solid. Like rock solid. Sometimes you always... I notice, Solid rock solid. I think Jason has a real <laughs> problem with rocks in general because he, they, he doesn't think they speak for themselves in their their hardness. In their solidity. So he's always well, I've been like, eating them. That's how I got this voice. You've been eating rocks? Gravel. Oh, gra oh gravel. scratching it up. Yeah. Once uh, a morning, one scoop. But here's the deal. Straight from the fish tank. Gardner Minshew can come off a plane looking like a bouse. Yes. But he's still a sixth-round rookie who did not do much against the Houston Texans. He almost won the game. Did you say he almost won the game? Yeah. Because it was, okay. what, 13-12? to 12? Yeah, I thought you said. Yeah, please start Tennessee's defense. So he was able to <laughs> score a home run. 12 points. Against Jacksonville, a good defense against uh, Gardner Minshew. I'm yeah. all about it. Yeah, it's a great play. It we, we already talked about Tampa Bay. I also think Green Bay versus Denver is is a fine play. At Green Bay's defense, they, they have the same thing going. They're, they look very improved on the defensive side of the ball, and you get to take on Joe Flacco and company where you literally only have to worry about Emmanuel Sanders. It's interesting. Sometimes, let's say you have a defense like Buffalo which we know is a really good defense, but they're taking on Cincinnati. And, like, Cincinnati is going to give up some sacks no matter what. But you also have, like, you know, some big playability and Zach Taylor's kind of creative and maybe Andy Dalton throws a couple touchdowns. So you've got that situation, better defense in Buffalo. But then you look at, like, this Green Bay-Tennessee game, and they feel like they're, they're defenses that can't be exposed. Like, Denver can't expose – Green Bay. They don't have the firepower to do so. Jacksonville can't expose Tennessee, so you feel like they're safer. Would you rather play – would I'd you rather play pivot from Buffalo yeah. and go get Tennessee or Green Bay? I would pivot to Tennessee. I don't know if I would go to Green Bay. Even like, Yeah, Andy Dalton could put up some points, but what I want – I want sacks and turnovers, and Andy Dalton is very capable of producing both of those for Buffalo. He's very proficient in producing yes. both of those. Yes. I guess the offensive line can take some blame. Yes. But, yeah, ho holding on to the ball and not having A.J. Green yet could have caused some problems. So, all right, those are some – it seems like the streaming options at defense this week nice. are pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, head and shoulders, offense for your hair, defense for a flake-free scalp. Check it out at walmart.com or at your local Walmart. We thank them for supporting this podcast, and uh, we thank the Foot Clan for doing that as well. I want to thank the studio sponsor today for this episode, uh, Pristine Auction, a Lamar Jackson. Ooh. Oh, I'm wearing my Lamar Jackson shirt today. Ooh. Says, but is that uh, signed by Lamar Jackson? No. Thanks, <laughs> what Jay. What a loser. Then, then you didn't get it from Pristine Auction. I know. I know. A signed jersey yesterday, $89. I was saying this. like That's nice. For that kind of a price, I don't understand, Brooks, why we don't have a Lamar Jackson jersey signed on our wall right now. 
I'm sorry. I mean, Shame we really need Brooks. to we need to grab a few for this season, and Lamar's in that category, no doubt. Eighty nine dollars yesterday. You can browse hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions at pristineauction.com. Use the promo code BALLERS when you sign up, and you'll save five dollars towards your first purchase. You guys have any uh, parting words for the Foot Clan today? Uh, just stay safe out there. Okay. Keep it, keep it beautiful. Keep it beautiful. I will never ask that question again, <laughs> but those are very even fine sentiments, Mike. What's wrong with keeping it beautiful? I don't even know what it means, man. I don't either, but we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Don't forget, Foot Clan, you got to check out Manscaped offering precision engineered tools for when you're trying to groom and keep it clean. Get that lawnmower 2.0, the electric trimmer with a waterproof and skin safe technology. All sorts of awesome things at Manscaped. They're keeping you clean. Get 20% off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS.